Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. What's going on, guys? Going to take a look at North Melbourne today, but before I do, Shorty's back from Lawn. Good little getaway. Yeah, what are we? Monday. Shorty's kind of in holiday mode. I'm not working too much at the moment. Handed in my notice for Coles, which is exciting. Start my new job later in the month. Not getting too many shifts. So Shorty wouldn't mind a little bit of extra cash, but in the meantime, while those shifts aren't coming, we're just cruising. So today's a good day to get a few videos done so i'll get a few out there schedule a few but yeah good couple of days in lawn me tis langers went down what was it got down there friday ripping weather for it it was it was great kicked the footy around got a couple of ideas for some goal kicking videos that we'll have to do through um through january and february and that type of thing it's a good setup down there at lawn absolutely packed like it was so busy which you'd expect but no, nah, good time. Got one of those filthy milkshakes out of the ice creamery there. Walked out there. Someone said, g'day to me. Watches the channel. So shout out to you, mate. Appreciate you saying hello. That was nice. And uh, yeah, just got the Italian feed. It's great feed. Best garlic bread going around. Not even biased. It's fantastic. Little Italian job next to um, Caravan Park. It's outstanding stuff. And um, yeah, went to that live wire park. You know, the one where you're doing the obstacles up there. Shorty's probably a little more nervous about heights than he anticipated, but <laughs> it was fun though. It was good fun. The zip line, great stuff. But um, yeah, overall, real good trip. The lawn pub that goes off. We, we were sort of having more of a chill um, getaway, like a few drinks, a few cocktails here and there, a little pina colada by the beach. Didn't go too bad, but yeah, lawn pub wouldn't be too bad at all to really sit in for a session because there was a genuine vibe going, like packed DJ. Uh, and that was at like maybe 9.30 or something like that. I was thinking, gee, get the fellas around here. A few pre-drinks roll in, cause some trouble. Gee, it could be all right. But um, no, it was a good getaway. I had to sort of come back and go straight to work, which wasn't ideal. So it was a bit of a drag on the old Sunday shift. I was just saying, fuck, two more Sundays. Two more Sundays, shorty. And then we're done and dusted. But um Yes, let's talk about North Melbourne, shall we? And there is a bit to talk about with North. They're uh, struggling at the moment, the Roos, but with that comes a bit of opportunity for guys to get a bit more responsibility in the guts. As we saw Jason Horn Francis out of here, said goodbye, controversial stuff, but does take some more chances for some other guys to get some opportunity. So we're going to talk about a bit of that right here, right now. Like I always say, if you've got any players you think I've missed, you think I should have talked about this bloke, but mm. I didn't. What are you doing, Shorty? Let me know. Um, and yeah, I'm always eager to hear from you guys. If you got any ideas on what you'd like to see for general videos as well, um, because like you see, we're nearly done these previews, which will be cool. And then we can really just open the wings and do whatever the hell we want. So um, Luke Davies Uniac is the guy I want to talk about. And this fella... Didn't he come on board last year looking like a superstar? That back end of the year was ridiculous. Now, of course, he averaged 101, which doesn't exactly put him in a cheap scenario, but if you look at the second half of the year, you go, well, is this bloke about to go 110? I mean, could he do that? He's only played... Fuck, he's played 71 games. There you go. I thought he was a bit less, in, bit less experienced than that. Fuck it, maybe you could go 110. But look at these numbers in the back half of the year. First half of the year, not really sure what was going on. Obviously got injured in round two there and missed round three. Now, North fans would be able to tell me better. I'm guessing I'm guessing he got a bit more of a license right in the guts. Um, let's check a little bit of the old center bounce attendance, Daddy. Um but yeah, the second half of the year was ridiculous. It's always an interesting question. Do we take the second half of the year or whichever half it is? Which one do we believe? Are they what we saw in the first half or are they what we saw in the second half? But a bloke like Davies Uniac, who was on the up, promised to always be everything he was in that back end of the year. I think we can safely say he has arrived and he's going to go nuts. Now, when was it that he sort of turned it on? Probably... Look, 95s in round 7 and 8 aren't anything to sneeze at. You could almost say round 7 or 8, he really started to up the ante. Is it reflected in these numbers? Probably not, to be honest. I mean, probably up until round 13, he had some good ones, had some not-so-good ones. But look, round 15 onwards, 
most of these in the 80% mark or above. And he really became just the main guy. He, he looked Judd-like, I oh know, dare I say it. The way he broke away from packs and stoppages was crazy good. So if we take that from sort of after the buy and look at that, 88, 120 plus, 150, 110, one, I'm guessing he may have copped a bit of a tag after being on fire. Nonetheless, 68, not ideal, but then just ended the year fantastically as well. And he's got a ceiling. We know that because he can win those clearances. He can damage. And he can even hit the scoreboard. You know, we, we saw him kicking goals um, in those last few games regularly, a couple of goals against the Hawks. So, look, he's not someone that I'm going to absolutely jump at. But I really like him, if that makes any sense. The only thing that puts me off is that you're going to need him to go probably another 10 points. And can he do that? Honestly, I think he can. Are there slightly more reliable options? Yeah, probably are, because we're looking to see him become a premium, super premium, for the first time in his career. Can he do that straight away in a struggling team? Will he cop more attention? How does it all look? Don't know. What we do know is that he can influence games as good as anyone in his age bracket, and he's only going to get better. So if, if you're out there and saying, Shorty, I wouldn't mind taking a bit of a risk. I feel like I want to get a little bit of value in my midfield. I like him. Who, who could you sort of say could explode into the 110 status? This guy could. So it just depends which way you want to cut it. If you want to be a little bit more conservative and only pick premiums who have done it before, which you know some people do, but if you're feeling a little saucy and you want to just go, look, I'm going to save some pennies, I reckon he can explode, take his game to the next level then he definitely can. The thing is, he doesn't have to take his game to the next level. He just has, he just has to do what he's already done for a whole year. So he did it for probably six to ten weeks. He's just got to do that for a full year. So I do see him averaging easily above 105, probably in the 108 to 112 bracket. So it's, it's not bad, not bad at all, because he looks destined to be a superstar. So... Um, very good up and coming option. Will be great to watch for a long time. Now, Ben Cunnington, we're going to talk plenty about. He finds himself at, I think, about 418 um, in the forward line, crucially. 419. And the crucial thing is he's a mid forward. So that brings him right into our focus. Now, of course, he's had his health battles. Really emotional stuff to see him back out there on the footy field, just like Sammy Doherty. Amazing story, great to see. It's sensational to see him even playing footy. Um, what level he can take it, it's hard to say. But that is the reason we see him discounted because he did have such a torrid year last year, just even working his way back to fitness and health. So finds himself discounted. 49 average, doesn't reflect what he can do at all, coming off the back of three tunned up averages. And he is 31, but he's that inside ball that North Melbourne need. While all these other young mids, Simpkins a bit more experienced, but blokes like Davies Uniac and, I don't know, Tom Powell, and you can throw all sorts of names at me, probably the fellas that they recruited at the top end of the draft. What was it, Wardlaw and Sheasel? You know, those sort of guys need a Cunnington in there to just do the grunt work. You know, the veteran, the hardened body to just get in there and help share the load. So I think we'll fully know the answer once the preseason starts to get going. But there's no doubt a fully fit Ben Cunnington is going to be in more centre bounces than not. Of course, the forward status, we saw him play a bit forward on his return and just ease him back into it. But there's no reason he can't go 90 plus. He's probably not cheap as chips. I mean, for a bloke who played two games and averaged 49, the super coach gods aren't wanting us to have the, that easy of a time, so they've given him a random price tag of 419, which which sees him, you know, priced along guys that you know have averaged a hell of a lot more than what he did. You know, he's priced in the 70s, mid 70s, which is still great. Don't you love when you get in a great train of thought? You're making a great point, and then you cut yourself off with the recording device. So that's fantastic. But don't know where I was up to, but I'll repeat a bit of it. A fully fit Ben Cunnington plays in the midfield and he is priced alongside guys in the mid-70s, which isn't quite reflective. You know, the Supercoach gods didn't give it to us easy um, this year. 
but it's a great discount price if you can get back to 95 plus no, no doubt about that there is a chance that he gives a bit more midfield opportunity to some of those younger guys and does play a bit forward, but a fully fit Ben Cunnington will play plenty of midfield minutes, no doubt about it. So watch him through the preseason. I think a big talking point will be Fife versus Cunnington. What does their role look like? There's a hundred grand between them. You know, can you trust them both? Can you trust none of them? Which way sort of do you go with those experienced guys who have done it for so many years for us, but now find himself pretty cheap? But can they rediscover their best form? So that's what I think we'll talk about a lot through the preseason. Early stages, they've got to be right on your radar. But we'll find out plenty over the coming months. Now, Tristan Cherry, I just wanted to talk about. I know there was a comment a while back. So I just wanted to include him because he was an interesting one last year. He was great for us for a bit. And then he was a bit of a headache. You know, we saw him start real well. Um, great price for us, 120 round two, 46 killed us, but then a ton, and then 68, and then boom, he's out of the team. Can't remember if he got injured or not. I think he did get injured. And then just never really found it again. His numbers weren't great. I think I think Goldstein might have returned to do a bit more of a significant load in that ruck department. Callum Coleman-Jones is in the mix. So, look, I just wanted to touch on Cherry largely off the back of the comment. Um, but he's going to be really awkwardly priced. I don't really see him, you know, 393. He may be the number one ruck. I'm not too sure. Watch this space. If he is, then yeah, we might have a conversation. But I don't really see him being the absolute main man. I think there'll be some sort of sharing of the ruck still at North Melbourne. So he's probably not someone high on my radar. And I'm pretty sure he lost dual position status, didn't he? So that's, yeah, he did. So it was not ideal either. But food for thought, he was a bloke that gave us a bit of a roller coaster. Oh, Jesus Christ, roller coaster last year. What will he give us this year? Now, speaking of roller coasters from time to time, you know, Taron Thomas has had an indifferent career so far. Promising young talent, showed glimpses, and then showed it all in 2021 with a fantastic... Talk about, you know, Davies Uniac with two halves of the season. Well, Taron Thomas was similar. After round nine, just was fantastic. Barely going under 90 with a couple of ripping games in 21. And then last year, just... It wasn't wasn't his year. Um, really struggled for the whole year. Average of 53, 10 games. From what I can hear and read... Sounds like there's a bit of stuff going on outside with footy. Um, you know, he was going through a bit in that department. Clearly, footy wasn't his number one priority in life, which which can happen. You know, that can happen. But as a result of this, Jesus, look at my typing. As a result of this, he sees himself at two ninety five as a mid forward. That's pretty good if he can find his best footy. And I guess that'll be the question. It's early January. It's pretty hard to say if he will or not, but he's got to be in the mix. If I'm predicting, I'm going to say, yeah, he finds his way back into being a really quality footballer and definitely averages 80+. plus. Where from there? I'm not too sure. He has the ability to be one of the more dangerous, influential mid-forward types. You know, He can cut you on the deck in the forward 50. He can swipe his way out of packs with pace and a nice sidestep, and he's a good user. So... Averaging in the 90s is possible for him, but he is a bit of an unknown commodity. The role is a bit up in the air. How much mid-time, how much forward time, where does the you know the new coach see him? So he has to be a watch because if we see a friendly role for him at 295, you've got to roll the dice, I reckon. But until then, it's pretty hard to say. So I've got to put him on the radar in the preview, but a bit like a few other guys we talk about at this stage of the year, We've got to see what the preseason gives us. We've got to wait and see. So um, keep him in mind. I wouldn't have him in your team pick it just yet. But I'll tell you what, a couple of good games, a couple of good articles, he could be in there. Just finally, Jack Zeeble. Not going to spend much time on him. I've seen him in a couple of team pickers. You know, I don't really like it, but you look just want to see if a few people may be getting seduced by, you know, he's... Um, he averaged 107 last year, down to 64. Can he get back to it? Look, I don't think he will, <laughs> plain and simple. If we look at last year, you know, he went back to a forward line player. We've seen Zeeble play mid for most of his career, then become the forward. 
then play this amazing Supercoach dream season as a defender, which was absurd. Massive scores, and he started last year doing that too. You can always get an indication on the rebound 50s. 4, 4, 8, tunned up, and a 62. Didn't quite um, correlate to good scores, but round 4, gains the Swans, kicks 5. Boom. Worked, and that seemed to be his lot in life for the rest of the year. You can see his goal tally pretty consistent, hitting the scoreboard, and more evidently, he was nowhere near the back line. Donuts on rebound 50s, except a solitary one in round 17. Just drifted down. Just went for a waltz, got a rebound 50. He's not a defender anymore unless we see anything different. I don't see it happening. You've got Aaron Hall who had an injury interrupted year and I'm sure he will again because those hammies just ping like no other. Quads going left, right and centre. And you got Luke McDonald as well. And, and look, even um, Bailey Scott and Lockie Young, like, there's a few rebounding, intercepting types that they'll probably look to develop ahead of Jack Zabel. So... Again, maybe some way through the preseason, I might be shocked. They might say, nah, Jack Zebel, we love his leadership down there. We're going to chuck him back there. Then all of a sudden we blow. Okay, heard you loud and clear. I'm listening. Let's go. But until then, not even giving him a thought. So um, pretty sure his days in our fantasy teams are done. But um, we had a good ride through 2021. No doubt about that. Thank you, Jack. Now, um, yeah, that's a wrap. That's a wrap for North Melbourne. few interesting players. I think when I did my team pick, I, I don't think I had any North Melbourne players in my team. Um, so, look, I think their developing side does give opportunity, but more so they're almost a team that you really have to see pre-season and what's unfolding and how it all looks because there's a lot of spots up for grabs, new coach, new environment. It's all happening. So... Stay tuned. I'm sure we'll talk plenty more on some of these North Melbourne prospects. But until then, that's about all I can say. But, uh, yeah, if you've got anything for me, chuck it in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, been loving the support. If you haven't subscribed just yet, feel free to. But um, if you've made it all the way through to this part of the video, you're one of the real ones. So I appreciate that. But uh, talk to you soon. Cheers.